Hello, this is Mr. W, and welcome to the second part in our series about basic chemistry for biology students. In our last video, I introduced a simple model of the atom, the building block of all matter. All atoms have a dense nucleus made up of positively charged protons and neutral neutrons. Negatively charged electrons orbit outside the nucleus in what are called orbitals, shells, or energy levels. In this video, we're going to look at how electrons are organized in atoms. That's going to set us up for understanding chemical bonding between atoms, which will let us understand the structure of the molecules of life. Molecules like DNA, which is the molecule of heredity, or starch, which is an energy storage molecule. Here's a carbon atom. For the rest of this video, we're going to simplify how we represent the nucleus. We're just going to show the numbers of protons and neutrons. What we're going to focus on are the electrons. Notice that in carbon, there are two electrons in the first orbital and four in the second. This pattern follows a rule. That rule is called the octet rule, and it's the basis of this lesson. The word octet means group of eight. This is a musical octet. In chemistry, octet refers to eight electrons. In terms of drawing atoms, the octet rule works like this. The first orbital can hold up to two electrons. The second and third orbitals can hold up to eight electrons. That's where octet comes in. You fill these orbitals from the inside out. Note that this rule only applies for the first few rows of the periodic table. But what's great is that in biology, almost all the important elements are found in those same few first rows. So, octet rule, 2, 8, and 8. Let's see how this works for the two smallest elements, hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen consists of one proton and one electron. The proton goes in the nucleus, the single electron goes into the first orbital. Helium, the stuff we fill helium balloons with, is the second smallest element. Helium structure is like this. It has two protons, two neutrons, they go in the nucleus, two electrons orbit outside. They both go into the first orbital. Now let's look at carbon. Carbon has six protons and six neutrons. If it has six protons, that means it also has six electrons. We're going to put the first two electrons in the first orbital, and then we're going to put four in the second orbital. Note that in the second orbital, I'm placing these electrons at 0, 90, 180, and 270 degrees. There is no accepted practice around this. But if you do it the way that I'm doing it, it's going to make it easier for you to follow when I teach about chemical bonding in future tutorials. Nitrogen, also crucially important in living things, has seven protons and almost always seven neutrons. You know that if there are seven protons, there are also seven electrons. So your next move is to fill the first orbital with two electrons, that leaves five, which we'll put into the second orbital. The choice about which one you pair up is completely up to you. Let's move to element 11, sodium. Sodium has 11 protons and usually 12 neutrons. With 11 protons, sodium is also going to have 11 electrons. Following the octet rule, we'll put the first two electrons in the first orbital. We'll fill the second orbital with eight electrons. Two plus eight is 10. 11 minus 10 is one. That one lone electron is going to go by itself in the third orbital. You should be getting the hang of it now. So let's look at sulfur, also one of the key elements in living things. Sulfur has 16 protons and 16 neutrons. What I want you to do is click pause, draw sulfur's electron structure on a piece of scratch paper, and then hit play to see if you've got it right. You'll organize sulfur 16 electrons like this. Two in the first orbital, eight in the second. That leaves six, which will go into the third orbital. Again, which ones you pair up is totally up to you. The octet rule's usefulness starts to break down with the elements that are in the fourth row of the periodic table, but we can use it for the first two elements in that row, which are both important in living things. Those are the metals, potassium, symbol is K, and calcium, symbol is Ca. Let's jump right into the larger of those two, which is calcium. It has 20 protons, usually 20 neutrons. Go ahead, draw it, see if you can get it right. As always, we'll put the protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Then, following the octet rule, We'll put two electrons in the first orbital, eight in the second, eight in the third. That accounts for 18 electrons. The last two go into the fourth orbital. Let's practice with a few more elements. Try to draw oxygen with eight protons and eight neutrons. Pause the video, draw it, then hit play to see if you got it right. Here's oxygen. Two electrons in the first shell and six in the second. Now try to draw phosphorus. 15 protons, 16 neutrons. Phosphorus has two protons on the first energy level, eight in the second, and five in the third. Again, there's no rule about which ones get paired up. So that's how you draw atoms using the octet rule. If you're going to learn this stuff, though, you really have to practice it. So what I want you to do right now is go to my website, Science Music Videos, where there's an online tutorial 
waiting for you. There's a worksheet. I want you to download it, work through all of the problems, the flashcards, the quizzes, and then I'll see you at the next lesson. Thanks.